every week it's like a run up to like, oh, all right, how, how quickly are we going to get all of our people here? Sometimes people are like sitting, waiting for us to jump on. Other times mm-hmm. it's like, oh, uh, you know, I have 60 people like at five after, you know, we'll, we'll see what uh, comes through. Normally I see all my same superstars rolling in here right at the beginning, which I'm always excited for. Let's see if I recognize anybody here. Who here is uh, first time? Oh, I love all the Fireflies note takers in here. Now I feel, I feel under the microscope. Who here is uh, first timers? Jump in the chat. Let's hear about it. I never, I never ask guys to put anything in the chat. There's Zach Miller. How's it going, man? Anybody else we know? Oh, whoever just said hi, like a lot of people are anonymous. Oh, there you go, Zach. Yeah, welcome first timers. This is gonna be a good one. Um, I'm gonna give it just a couple more minutes. We're up to 40-ish now. So I'm gonna give a couple more minutes for people to file in, a minute or so. Um, but yeah, if this is your first time, really excited. We have Zach here with us uh, and we're gonna be digging into some cool stuff. Stuff I think we've been talking about in the newsletter for some time now. Um, and finally talking to people who are like out in the world, putting this into action, right? Like ASC has been like the Advantage Plus stuff and the the shops and all that have been is so maligned, but also like, you know, some people are like, oh yeah, they're working great. And other people are like, oh no, they they suck, right? Um, so chatting about that's gonna be really interesting. All right, we're up to 47 here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Remember everybody, um, if you enjoy this newsletter, you enjoy this webcast, um, webinar, morning show, whatever you wanna call it, uh, send it to your friends, send it to other people at your agency, at your company. Um, We love to have more people in here. Um, Send it to your friends. There's an invite link at the bottom of the email. Um, Send the email to people, send your questions to us. You know, a lot of times, um, I find questions where people are tweeting at us on Twitter, or they're DMing us, or people are mentioning things during the webinar that I end up answering in the next one. Um, if you have specific questions, you know, there's 50 of us here. Um, I could probably get to it. I can probably answer it, right? So uh, send anything through. All right. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Media Buyer Webinar. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm your host this week and every week. Um, and the Media Buyer newsletter slash webinar is where we do a deep dive into the latest e-com data powered by Northbeam. See what trends, anomalies, or interesting findings uh, we can uncover. Well, we're going to keep it simple. Um, this session, I'm going to run right through the data pretty quick, and then we're going to get straight to our chat with Zach Duncan, who I'm going to introduce here. Uh, let's get into it. So <clears throat> we are still recovering from Meta's meltdown. Um, you know, if we're going to call it that, that's what we've been calling it here around the house. Uh, and still, interestingly enough, that hasn't changed. Uh, people still have their budget share pretty high on meta that has not really moved. Um, normally we've seen from 65 to 67% of the budget share going to meta. That's what we expect. That's where it's been staying. Um, and we're back with Google data this week. Uh, unfortunately, nothing surprising has really changed with the exception of the shopping budget going down a little bit. I don't really see that changing. All right. Um, it's just Pmax getting a little bit more. Um, we're going to do deep, deep dives into Pmax in the future. Uh, right now, we're still collecting data. People are still learning it. Um, it works, right? It works. Uh, so let's do auction and conversion metrics first. The thing to note here, look at all the green arrows across the meta Google like conversion funnel, right? This has a wildly improved. We are seeing ROAS dive, CAC is down, CVR is up. Anything above 2% change on either of these channels is pretty noteworthy. Uh, and it's green arrows all across the board, right? Meta's got their stuff together now. Um, those of you who have had accounts banned, blocked, performance struggles that you've been having over the last couple of weeks, finally starting to recover, right? Um, we know that there's a big funnel between those two platforms and they are improving. Even if you know click-through rates aren't necessarily, we see CPMs are down, CPCs are down for those of you who are at pretty high volumes. Um, but for those of you who are focused on performance stuff, um, I'm really excited to see CAC and ROAS go where they're supposed to be. Now, if they're supposed to be where they're supposed to be for your brand, great. If they're not, like you are not alone. 
this is what we see across to everyone, right? So most people are regressing back to where they were before. This is not a guarantee that all ads are performing the way they were before you started flipping switches in the chaos of what was happening. I think it's two weeks ago now, going on two, two and a half. Um, yeah, so keep an eye on that. But generally, the news is good. Industry by industry, you know, that conversion funnel fix, what you see is green arrows across all the industries as well. This is tough to read this week because of that change, of that fix. It's tough to look at this and say, yeah, no, definitely food and beverage is definitely going the way it was supposed to, right? Like, oh, it's definitely up 22% like week over week, right? When in actuality, we're not even sure if, for example, food and bev over indexed and turning off of their, their ad campaigns or whatever, right? Like, um, you know, this is hard to read this week. What is notable in here is I see jewelry going up, Mother's Day arrives. Um, whether or not your mom actually wants a heart-shaped necklace is worth discussing in some other webinar, but we know that people are buying them. That's up this week. Accessories is up. Um, and Food and Bev has had a pretty fantastic recovery from the meta meltdown. <clears throat> now, I want to jump straight into this because we're already going at seven after. I would like to introduce Zach. Um, Zach is a huge North Beam fan, friend of the brand. Um, you know, he's joining our our webinar today uh, to talk a little bit about paid media, performance media. Um, Zach works with Mad Rave. I'll, I'll let you do your intro, but Zach, it's it's um it's great to have you here. Um, we're going to run through some ad measurement strategies and ways you ways you use Northbeam today, um, and I'm excited to get into this. So, Zach, uh, welcome to the show, um, and you can take over and give us a little presentation now. Yeah, thanks, Brian. What's going on, guys? Um, yeah, so I'll share my screen, kick this thing off. I think I got to get uh, screen sharing permissions real quick. Um, but yeah, so Mad Raven's my agency. I've had a couple agencies. This is the one that's more of a boutique model right now. I'm just working with a few brands doing primarily paid meta. Um, and then uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. There we go. Screen share. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So just do a quick little introduction. I'm running Facebook ads for about seven years. Um, funny story how I got into it. So I used to be a welder. Um, and I remember when I first got a job being a welder, the guy was like, why do you want to do this? This is where you go to like lose money and just like get old and get hurt. Um, so I was doing that during the day doing construction. And then at night, I think I saw like a Ty Lopez ad or something about making money online. And so I started that. So I started a, a, a women's lingerie business um, on Shopify. So I was working 12 hours a day at night then at, or during the day. Then at night I was working uh, my dirty boots and stuff like that on uh, my Shopify store selling women's underwear. Um, and then that's when I discovered Facebook ads. I made barely enough money just to pay for taxes doing that. Um, then I realized Facebook ads is really what I enjoy. I mean, it, you get that. I think we could all uh, understand that uh, dopamine hit you get from scaling ads. So then fast forward over the last seven years, I've worked with over 50 D2C brands. I spent over $100 million. I've operated multiple ad agencies, um, all creative and media buying, um, a little bit of CRO and analytics and that stuff. Um, I discovered Northbeam last year in uh, January 22. And then... Um, yeah, through my client Vessi, so which we're still working with them now. And then right now, I'm just have primarily a consulting and uh, agency firm called Mad Raven. We just take on a few brands at a time. I live the agency life with you know a bunch of employees and clients, and um, it's not really my thing. So more of just boutique model now, where I can go deeper with with a lot of brands. I'm really passionate about D 2 C, um, anything brand strategy, analytics, operations, all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah, today, so to, kinda... to frame this okay, up, go we're, we're going to cover, to frame this up, we're going to cover quick for everyone on the call. We're going to talk a little bit about measurement because I think this is important and, uh, I don't think we talk enough about it as a, as a, a, a collective, especially the group on this call. Um, and then we're going to get into some specifics that you like Zach about mm -hmm. the specific North B models you're looking at, the specific metrics you're checking at. Um, and then at the end of the call, uh, at the bottom here, we're going to get into some stuff about actual paid media tactics and stuff you're doing now that are working, right? So, um, yep. yeah, that, that's our that's what we're going to get into. Uh, and take it away, bud. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I kind of wanted to start just with measurement, like Brian said, because I think that there's a lot of people that understand attribution and multi-touch attribution. Um, and a lot of people might not understand fully just measurement at large. And I think there's a lot of narrative in the market of um, if it's this or that, you know, which one should I use? And I think it's not which one. I think it's more of which one when. Um, should I use multi-touch attribution for the answer this problem to solve this question? Should I use MMM or incrementality? So we're not going to spend the whole time getting super deep on this. I mean, you, we could have hours and hours just on each one. Um, but I'll just kind of give like what I think as if you're a media buyer or a VP of marketing or someone that, you know, it's working in a D2C brand, how to view these as tools. Um, because that's really all they are. I know, like I said, there's so much debate, um, you know, black and white, never use attribution, only use attribution. Like, hey, they're just tools. You know, we don't have to get all dramatic about it. Um, and this is how I think we, we should use them. So for MTA, which is, you know, North, uh, North Beam. So the fastest form of reliable measurement. So, you know, um, out of these three, if you look at daily performance, like you guys all know what North Beam is. So I need to spend a whole lot on that. But it's definitely the fastest versus MMM and incrementality. Um, MMM is, it's been around since the 70s, and it's really to solve these two questions here. How much should I spend and where should I spend it? It's great for macro business ec economic measurement. Um, the thing with MMM is I have some clients and I've talked to a few brands that are trying to build this out internally and they've hired data scientists and it is, it's definitely a task. You could download, um, Facebook has open source called Robin and they have different, um, code you could plug into with like profit and stuff like that. If you know how to use R and get all technical or give it to a data scientist and that could take like, you know, six months to a year to create this model, um, in your company. And maybe, maybe people could do it faster. I'm not an expert there, but from what I've heard in the exposure I have, um, it's great for quarterly budget allocation um, and goal planning. So it's something that if you're spending enough, I'd say if you're doing at least over 10, 20 million a year in your brand um, or for your client that you're working with, this is, this starts to become a solution that you would need when you have so many other ad platforms and omni channel. Um, so stoke that North beam is coming out with their MMM plus, or they've already came out with it. And I think they're doing some beta tests. So this is something that's on the radar. Like this is, um, you still need, it's not like one or the other, like, Oh, I'm just going to do MMM. Or I'm just going to do incrementality. You know, uh, MTA is your daily attribution. I mean, MT, I mean, even, um, Facebook and, and they all use attribution. They use more of a linear model with first click and last click. Multi-touch is more of um, different. You know, we'll get into the different models here. So even Google Analytics coming out with their, their GA4 is more of a data-driven model. So this is not going to go away. This is something that you want to look at daily um, and keep on doing that. And then, like I said, MMM is great for... Uh, that quarterly high, high level decision making of where should I spend, how much should I spend it, and just to go, all MMM really is it's like a reg, it's a statistical analysis, regressional analysis that looks over you know twelve the twelve months to five years of your data, and it pulls in all the seasonality, all the discounts, all lifetime value. And you don't have to actually track any users. It's not taking touch points into play like MTA. Um, it's taking all the macro overall data and then doing a statistical regressional analysis just to simply answer how much should I spend and where should I spend it, which is pretty important, um, but it's such a data behemoth. Um, and then incrementality. So this in, this one is great for measurement. It's, it's, it's one of the more accurate. I think they're, all of them are trusted, reliable methods. Um, but this could be very expensive to hire a third party or to have it. It's just the same thing as MMM to do this the right way. Um, but you think of incrementality as kind of like split testing. Like you say, you have two different strategies, say for our client Vessi, we want to test um, what's a uh, waterproof shoe angle or more shoes that are made for ve vegan. You have two different angles here. And we're going to test both of those two different marketing strategies. Which marketing strategy is going to work better? We're going to do this for over three months and I'm going to have a holdout and then and we'll have the control and we'll have these two different angles. Then we're going to measure the lift on one of these angles. Um, and then what some, you know, some companies, they could tell you how if Facebook, uh, where you're at within Facebook sales or not. Um, and if Facebook's way off and stuff like that. So this is more the way I like thinking about incrementality is if you have enough, if you're spending enough, usually you could use your reps. Like if you have a disruptor rep or 
um, Google, Google ads rep, um, they'll offer this. Facebook's starting to, um, what they're pushing for always on conversion lift studies, um, which will kind of take care of this. Now, the caveat is it is through Facebook, so you have to trust it, but they do a pretty good job at even triangulating. We've had Facebook triangulate with Northbeam and um, uh, incrementality from their own in-house marketing science team. Um, so they do a pretty good job at, at trying to not be super biased. But if you're spending enough money, then you could pretty much get it in-house through Facebook. Um, so yeah, so my take is you need, you, you know, I don't like overcomplicating things. If you're not spending a whole lot, um, you know, just all you need is, is nor I mean, still, even if you're spending a lot of people are, are primarily just using North Meme for uh, multi-touch attribution. And they're coming with MMM, which is just going to be fantastic for um, those macroeconomic decisions and big budget decisions and then more strategic like hey which branding um, strategy should we use and use incrementality to the different ways of measurement um, um are yeah. there are there you know you talk about oh if you're spending enough money in your mind are there hard spend breakpoints for where you go all right now it's time we're spending enough that mmm is now valid or we're spending enough that now mm -hmm. incrementality is valid i hear so many people you know, with like sub 10,000 Facebook spends every month, like wanting to run incrementality tests. And I'm like, I don't really know if that's the right thing. So yeah. where, where are your breakpoints in your mind or what, what sort of features are necessary that say, okay, now it's time for us to look at MMM or incrementality. Got it. Yeah. I think that's a great question. And I want to actually clarify something. So um, the spend is important, but it's also about your channel diversification. If you're spending, like if you're only spending on Facebook, like you don't really need to do any of this stuff. Um, you're, you're good with just multi-touch attribution, like just using North Beam. Um, but I, I think it's more of, say if you're spending 100K a month would be the minimum to look at anything else. Um, just throwing that number out there. Uh, and then if you're spending 100K a month and that's split pretty evenly, so your media mix is split like 30% between three different channels at 100K a month. Um, and then it could make some sense, but still that's like still kind of overkill. I have so many brands like I'm sure you guys are familiar with like the the memes of the the Chad versus Virgin advertising memes. Um, I mean, there's brands like uh, I was I've been talking to the founder of uh, Mini Katana Isaac, and he spoke at an event, and they got asked on stage like like how do you you know do your attribution? And he's doing you know he's a little bit different situation because he's not doing paid media, um, and he's like I just vibe it, and that guy's crushing it, and he's making all this money, and, and so. I think you don't want to overkill it. You don't want to be the virgin, you know, only spending 100K a month and trying to figure out the lift and incrementality and MMM and all this stuff. But you want to know, it's kind of like what I said at first, you want to know uh, not which one, it's which one when. Um, and most of the time, I would say 90% of people, we just need this uh, MTA. The reason I wanted to discuss these three is because just for that fact of which one should I use? And a lot of people don't understand, they think, measurement is only attribution when there's multiple forms of measurement. Um, but yeah, the answer to your question, I mean, if you're spending less than a hundred grand, I mean, even more than that, um, once you get to the point where you're like, I'm spending everywhere and I don't know what's what's happening. Um, first step, I would say, look at North beam and you can look at the overview reports and stuff like that. But this is, uh, incrementality is if you're spending a lot, and multiple channels, and you want to test different key marketing initiatives. I want to test. I don't know if my um, if my, if this marketing angle or if this ge this geographic versus this country. It's more of like a hypothesis at a larger scale is testing incrementality. That's how I would say it. Um, cool. So yeah, so that's that, and then. So I touch on some of the attribution models, just picking from um, what Northbeam provides here. So I'm I'm kind of curious. I wonder what I don't know if you guys have like consensus on what everyone uses. I'm assuming it's clicks only. Um, Brian, what do you see on the most common model? It it kind of depends on what your goal is. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk a lot about and looking farther down your stack. Mm -hmm. uh, doing the one day click attribution window clicks only is the most conservative and kind of aggressive 
angle that you can hold your own ads to. So like most people use that, right? Mm -hmm. But like when I want to start talking about, I start reaching a point where I'm like, yeah, but like, well, what about the lift or like what's happening mm -hmm. in the long the long view, right? Like, oh, yeah. you know, we spent two, 2 million this year. Like what's the long view? That's when I start getting clicks and views involved, especially mm -hmm. when you start looking at um, the other measurement models that you talked about where lift and incrementality and, you know, you start plugging organic in and stuff like that. Like that's when I look at clicks and views and like, like non-direct and stuff like that. But generally my favorite thing to do is to hold my ads to the most aggressive standards possible because then your experiments are just like, they're so much more effective immediately. Yeah. And then if you're not using so many of these, if you're not using these platforms, especially if you're a smaller brand as a like direct, this has to be profitable because it's paying for itself. It's the growth engine of our company. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to have it on one day clicks. So yeah, it's, it, it really just like the models above it depends on what you're trying to look at at the time, but generally clicks only is our favorite thing. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I, everything you just said, I'm aligned with, that's exactly how we do it um, for our clients, which is, cause it's like, what's the point of using an attribution tool if you're going to inflate the results, right. And, and, and then add some skeptical, you know, re, uh, possibilities in there. So yeah, cause so clicks only, but again, it's not just black and white, like the whole, you know, there's no um, absolutes. So I do use some of these uh, at different times for different things. So our, our usual day-to-day -day is clicks only um, for prospecting, day-to-day -day scaling, or just day-to-day -day media buying, clicks only, one-day click attribution, um, accrual, um, same thing you said, you know, just want to be as conservative as possible. Um, the only, when we get a new North Beeman account set up with a client, it's like, you know, you put on one day click and if they're used to seeing inflated Facebook results, like five or as of, you know, they have seven day click one day view and they see like a point or a one, they usually freak out. But most people understand that by now. I think we've got understanding what, how the, how to be conservative with it and why that metric looks like that. Um, but if I'm so like, there's some other strategies you could do, you know, for, I love that you guys updated the UI and you can look at the custom columns with the new visit percentage. So I always have a new visit percentage and um, one of the first things to look at and then running video views uh, as a campaign. Um, it does it for us. We found that it gets a really high new visit percentage and then trying to look at the, the bottom of the funnel metrics um, using Google analytics and stuff like that, looking at the time on site and some of those other metrics, like just doing a ex, an export and matching that data on GA and, and North beam. Um, I've seen that the, the quality of the traffic isn't as high, but um, there's, we're getting like super cheap, 80% new visit, 90% new visit rates. So clicks only that's like, there's like zero sales coming in. Like it, it looks useless clicks and views. I could see a lot more sales coming in. Um, and again, nothing, the way I look at, like I've been saying over and over attribution and all this is nothing is like a, a concrete answer. I always, I always look at data as like, this is more to the story. Like I'm just looking at this. I need, I need more storytelling for me to understand what's going on here. Um, and so I look at clicks and views. I could look at first touch. Maybe that would be a good one for video views, brand awareness, prospecting, um, top of funnel, and then kind of put those three together. And then I still look at Facebook one day click. And I still look at GA. Um, if again, I have, if I'm spending just a little bit with an account, I don't, I don't go that, that in detail, but I look at all these different options to understand the story better. Um, and then if we go over to retargeting, um, I, I, I do use clicks only kind of like for the blanket, um, all of my analyzing, but I do like also looking at last non-direct touch, um, which is great because it strips out the direct visit. Um, so if you have, so a lot of the times, I think it's funny because about a couple of years ago, North or uh, retargeting just stopped working that good. And that was about the same time North Beam was getting popular. And a lot of people are like, well, all my retargeting in North Beam sucks. And then I've, I've talked to like Ryan and a few people, you know, on, on the North Beam team. And they're like, no, this is like, this is just meta nowadays. Like we're analyzing like uh, hundreds of accounts and this is just how it is. Um, and I found that looking at last non-direct touch, it, it might not make the ROAS go up any higher. Um, but technically this is the, the last touch. If it came from 
Instagram or something like that. And then they went on direct. So it would go to the last touch that's not direct. Um, and that's a great way to look at your retargeting efforts because there's some ad accounts where like retargeting just does not work. Then some ad accounts where like you could set up the funnels um, more of like a, a strategy a few years ago, set up some middle funnel retargeting and, and it will actually um, show some performance in North Beam. So that's kind of what I use for uh, on attribution models. Um, cool. Anything else you wanted to touch on there? Um, no, uh, I'm, I'm curious about your stack and I'm especially curious, uh, given what you talked about, you know, the data storytelling piece, especially mm -hmm. curious about your ROAS there, the ROAS range that you shoot for. Yeah. Um, you know, for most clients, you're trying to hit a 0.8 to a one, one day click. Would love to hear where that comes from because so often, you know, have clients or leadership be like, I want a five for no yeah. reason other than they kind of want a five. So would love to yeah. hear your, your thoughts about the stack and, and those numbers specifically. Yeah. And I was actually going to do a little bit on calculating this. Um, and I saw, I think, um, you got, whoever you had on last time, I watched the ad pros. I watched it briefly and he and I downloaded his template and it was pretty good. So I didn't want it to be redundant. Um, but I could, I, I have two theories about that. I also feel like setting this target with when it comes to using like North Beam or, you know, multi attribution, it is very difficult. I don't want to make it seem like it's easy. I know most people do just pull it out of their ass. Um, and it is difficult to set the target because you're using. I mean, if we're going off of North Beams, we don't know exactly. It's not, I don't want to say it's a black box because you guys are very transparent about everything and how it's all working. But to create that correlation of what is the target ROAS, um, a lot of the times what we'll do is we'll just um, we'll just get the last 90 days of data and look at the, like the target CAC, strip out the outliers, the sales and stuff like that, and then figure out what days in North Beam we're correlating with the good days. Um, that we see in Facebook and other uh, platforms and Shopify and blended metrics. So, and then we'll just kind of like, okay, on a, all of our good days, we had like a 0.8 and an, or a one North Beam ROAS. So let's just call that the KPI for now. And then on the other side is that using North Beam, it's all about, it's kind of like the same way if you buy off Google Analytics attribution or just using UTMs. Um, it's the, the answer is like, whatever is the highest one. Right. So if you look at it, it's always benchmarking. Like whenever I look at GA, like I know GA universal, all of this is not tracking and like that accurate. That's okay because I'm just benchmarking. It's, it's all inaccurate at the same time. It's all collectively um, inaccurate. So I'll just use, you know, if, if this campaign off of the UTMs is looking higher, getting more revenue, then I'll just, I'll go off of that one over more times. Um, and then why this is so low, I probably should have clarified on this is that we're kind of used to some of the brands that we work with. Like I said, we're boutiques. So we take a few brands that are kind of spending quite a bit on multi-channel. Uh, multi um, when you when you have like omni-channel uh, spending a lot, YouTube, Google, Facebook, when I say a lot, like, I, I mean, at least like 500K a month um, on more than on a few channels each. Um, then the the touch points i've noticed that the the targets the roas is a lot lower because i think it has to disperse the touch points more evenly and i've even noticed where um when we're using clicks clicks only in north beam like for example someone a client will scale up youtube really hard um and i think it's just good to understand when when you're scaling multiple channels at once uh that you're not going to see a huge lift in north beam at least from what I've seen, um, a lot of times you'll see, you'll see like a small lift, like on the, on the hundredth of the decimal. I haven't seen this in any of my accounts and everyone I've talked to, I haven't seen like a, a test happen where North Room just goes from like a one to like a three. I think it's usually very incremental. And I think the reason why, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, I think since you guys track all the touch points, and if you look at the orders view, there could be tons of touch points on there that they have to disperse those, um, you know, evenly, I, I mean, I think it's, you guys have a little bit of machine learning in your clicks only, but dispersing all those touch points, say if someone has 50 touch points, they saw all these different channels and Clavio and everything. Um, that means that like, you should really be looking at like the point that the hundredth of the the decimal point, um, say like one zero seven versus um, one point 
one is, is a big difference. I know it sounds crazy, but when we do a lot of effort and scale a lot with these bigger brands, um, yeah, we don't see a big, a big lift in the numbers, um, because there's so many touch points. So we kind of get, you know, looking at 20% changes on, on the decimal points and seeing, and we still don't even make like knee jerk reactions three to seven days. Um, we'll try to give it a little bit longer. I feel like I might sound might have made that sound a little more complex than it is. <laughs> no, and I mean that, but you're exactly right, right? Like if you're doing honest to God omni channel, like that one day click ROAS, it's not going to move. It's not going to move quickly. It's not right. And that's why it constantly some of the best brands we have on here, some of the best brands that I sit with and talk with, they don't even look at that. They're looking mm. at their MER, right? Because that's a more holistic yeah. view of like, oh, across all of our efforts, you know, maybe we cranked all this up. Um, how is it actually affecting our, our bottom line, our profitability instead of going, I need this specific ad to be, you know, hand to mouth constantly. And that's the only way you move forward. I know there's a, there's a point where you, you really have to take a leap of faith and go, yeah, I am going to start spending on Snapchat. I'm going to start spending on TikTok mm -hmm. or Twitter. I'm just going to throw that money out there into the void and hope. And your, your first reaction is going to be, well, what's the ROAS on that, right? Um, yeah. And it's, it's, you do have to take a leap of faith. And you and so many other agency founders um, you know, hold brands' hands through that. And if there's anything that I can say about this entire presentation and to do this point is so often there and same with last week there's a lot of education and teaching going on where you have to make that explanation to your clients mm -hmm. or to whatever stakeholder whoever holds the credit card right and be like listen this is how it works in 2023 this is how it works and building that trust and building that um uh, uh, uh relationship is going to be something that i might have you back on to talk more about <laughs> at some point um yeah. but yeah let's let's keep going this is fantastic yeah, hundred percent. You're a hundred percent right with that. That's like half. That's even more than I've talked to a guy that runs an agency, um, and he's like this big branding guy. I won't name him. He has like hundreds of clients. And I asked him like, what his job is, and he's like eighty percent education. I'm like really, and that's like our sales, you know. Um, so it's it is very true. Um, cool. Let's. I saw some questions about ASC, and let's hop into some of these different strategies here that are that are working. Um, so I figured I would just put it together like. You know, it looks kind of like a, a notion petri dish here of strategies. So I just threw together some uh, some stuff that's working right now for us. Um, so the first thing is this web plus shop. So if you guys have access to this, I know I think in the US, most people have access to this. Um, this is something it's, and I want to make a caveat. This is working now because I don't think, because I think most people don't have access to it. And that's how, unfortunately, that's how Facebook works. Same thing with ASC. ASC was crushing it. Um, and then now it's like, you know, I have some metrics here to show after quite a bit of spend, it's doing like decently and we could break down ASC. Um, but I'll just go over this real quick. So we did this web plus shop test. I have a few hypotheses on why it did so good. Um, and this is, so I have uh, North Beam and I have Facebook. So we're big fans of running like Facebook experiments in there because I don't know if you guys know, but like it actually does a holdout. So this, the two audiences will never, it won't ever overlap in the buckets. Um, so we spent lifetime 20 grand each. So 40 grand on this uh, web plus shop and it's an ASC. Um, and just, I, just to make sure everyone understands the web plus shop is using Facebook's um, native Shopify or shop checkout, like an app. So it's way quicker. It's way better for conversion rate. Um, and yeah, Facebook said that they're going to um, the five, they have a 5% selling fee, like a virgin fee, just like as you would through Shopify. And that'll be waived till July 1st. They keep pushing it back. Um, and then next year, they're going to stop. So they're going to get everyone on it. And then they're going to stop um, people, the ability for people to check out through Shopify. So if you go on the app right now, if you're going to add, swipe up you can you can buy there is there should be an option to click to go to this to your shopify store so they could open up the facebook shop like a little marketplace like catalog click on a product and buy it through your shopify store um, they're stopping that next year they're making all shop traffic mandatory to check out through facebook and instagram um, hopefully all you guys will be getting access to it and then you need to optimize your shop 
and uh, you know have good product pictures and stuff on here for it to look nice, just like anything else. It's like a landing page. So what we did is we just set up an ASC um, lifetime. This is actually just recommended by the reps. So not a whole lot of strategy went into it from us. Um, and yeah, we just ran it. It's so it was, yeah, ASC and we put the same creative, same everything in it. I think we had a, a 0% customer budget on the ASC. Um, and everything was the same. And then Facebook looked like the shop was doing way better. Um, and then shops was crushing it for, and this is, by the way, this is one day click in Facebook, which is insane. Um, so we, we, we buy everything off of one day click, some accounts that are spending less seven day click. We don't use the view. Um, so this is optimizing and reporting off of one day click Facebook. And then, uh, yeah, the North beam results came in. So it's funny. This is where, this is my hypothesis. I'll, I'll just be blunt to say that I think Facebook is pushing this. I think they throttle new products, which I think we could all kind of agree on. Um, and it had good new visits and all that, but North beam, which is, you know, more of truth of what's going on. It did show a good lift in this as well. Actually, I think I'm thinking about ASC where Facebook showed it doing really good and, and North beam said it was doing decent. So yeah, so North beam and Facebook both showed the shops is crushing it. And that's why it's number one. So really not a whole lot of strategy. I think this is just something that you guys should just jump on because it's new. And then I, this is funny here. Um, we got like 17, we got like 720 purchases, um, and only 17 of them were through meta. So like, is it actually even do anything? I don't know, but I think Facebook's throttling it because we clicked Facebook and shop, which I find interesting. Um, so yeah, so set that up super simple. I'll share this link to this notion. You guys have, it, it connects uh, Shopify and all these other ones. Um, you just got to add your account. You have to be an admin um, to create your Shopify store. You have to get the, the Facebook and Instagram sales channel on your Shopify, build out your store, and then create an ASC campaign and select the web plus shop. Um, so that's that question. I don't know if there's any questions in here. I could go on. I see most of them are on ASC. So I could, uh, wait, here we go. Can you see web plus shop? Even if client does not have Facebook checkout. Um, no, you need, you have to get the store set up first. So um, that's the, the step one. You got to get the store set up, the checkout set up. You have to have mostly, this is like more of a client task because they're going to have to set up even like their business information, like even their EIN and, and stuff like that to get this set up. Um, so you probably want to go through it and Facebook has some good documentation. If anyone needs help with this, just hit me up on Twitter. I could help you guys out with this here. Um, but Get your shop set up really well. Make sure it works. Test it out, and then launch a uh, web plus shop. Listen, it's it's um it's an open secret that the new sort of ad placements it's it's in Meta's best interests for them to work. I mean, this yeah. has kind of always been the case, not just on Meta, but like literally any advertising. That's why so many of the new um streaming platforms or ad placements like all the stuff we saw last week at the new fronts um that's why they launch with these big agencies partners because they're with these big brand partners you know because they're like well we know it's going to work because one the platform is going to make it work two it's a new ad format that people arguably aren't going to have um as much you know literacy towards or like blinders against mm -hmm. right um and so like of course being a first mover is like, if you do it right, it can work, right? That's why everyone does it. It's it's not unheard of, but um, it's difficult. It's another one of those leaps that you have to take uh, in being like, we're going to try something brand new and like yeah. trust that it'll work. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't work and they still push it like crazy and they just lie to you and say it's working. So like you asked about reels and this is actually a little bit, it's not the real strategy that using the reels placement. So I'll explain that, but reels is one of those that I saw, whoops, not work um, that good, but we'll get into that. Um, yeah. So for, for ASC, so this is ASC, it's like we were just talking about, it was crushing it. Um, when at first, at least for us, it was crushing it for all our clients when we first launched. Um, it's starting slowly to not do as good, but we're also starting to get smarter about it and understand like what it's sensitive to. Um, 
So I have one specific strategy that works well here that I could go over. Um, but yeah, ASC, a few notes, works best with accounts that have a lot of data. Um, I've seen a lot of brands like set it up and not have a whole lot of historical data and it's just not really do that good. The, the way I've seen ASC is like, it rather works really well or, or it doesn't. Um, I've seen it like, like we, we actually had a rep tell us for BFCM last year to start. I built this huge strategy to diversify $200,000 a day in a budget um, for BFCM. And the rep said pretty much in other words, he said, my strategy is stupid. Just put $200,000 in one ASC and, and just start it like that. Um, and then, so we, we increased the ASC budget to like 70 K and it was just like, it was just like terrible for the first few days. And I've realized, okay, big learning here. ASC with new creative at high budget on day one is not a good idea. That's, that's why the whole reason it works kind of like, um, you know, performance max for Google is that it has like, Hey, here's some suggestions. We think we've learned off of these creatives. They work. So when you go on the ad set level, um, you scroll all the way down and it has those creative suggestions. Those are actually usually work pretty good. So now we don't start them on big budgets and we don't start with like a lot of new creative. I heard some people doing creative testing with AFC on low budget and they said it's working. I haven't tried that. And it sounds like an interesting idea, um, but big budget, and with a creative you're not maybe not sure about, and that's not a good idea with ASC. Um, yeah, that's pretty much just said. And then, okay, so AS, the way I think about it, it is Facebook did confirm to us it's like in you know, a little bit of a different algorithm for ASC. And the way I think about it is like the has two extremely important signals is the creative and the product. We all know nowadays like creative is targeting. And your creative is how you, uh, you know, if like put it this way, um, Vessi had an ad that had two guys in it, I think like holding hands or something and then it had, and then usually our op we do broad targeting and it usually just auto targets like women 80%. And then for that ad specifically, it went to men and we didn't change anything. So like that just says it all that Facebook knows Facebook targets off of the, the creative. Um, and then the other thing is that, Facebook also does, the product is such a huge variable. Um, so our strategy here, and this was um, the buyer we have on uh, Vessi, his name's Kevin. He's a freaking gangster, one of the best buyers I've ever met. Shout out to Kevin. He created this strategy. Um, so this is one ASC pour, uh, per core SKU. So if you have most, like so many times of brands are working with them and they're like, why, like, wh like what happened? How come the row is down or conversion rates down? Like, oh, you're out of stock. Like that happens like almost every week. Um, and so what we decided is let's create one ASC per core SKU. Say if we have three core products and you can figure out what the core products are by going to North Beam, um, doing the LTV thing here. Maybe we could get into that, but this is a great, um, I don't know if I'm gonna share this client's data, but I like going on the, the first order product. Um, and then figuring out which is getting the best reorder rate in LTV. Uh, and then there, you know, and I'm sure some other data, you, you should be able to figure out what's your best product for acquisition and then get those two to three products and make one ASC per product. And what that does um, allows us to scale up and down parallel to stock levels. So conversion rates down because we're spending a lot on an ad that's going to, a, a, even if, even if inventory, stock is like 30% lower on the variance for one product that makes a big impact on conversion rate. So we'll scale that down. Um, or scale up, we got we just got a big stock influx. The creative and the campaign has already been learning. Don't need to you know make new just drops or whatever, just scale up that ASC. Um, and it gives us faster insights to what type of creative is performing um, better for that product. So it's, you know, creatives perform a lot different per product. Um, and over time from doing the strategy, you'll start learning instead of making, I have four ad types. I'm just going to make with whatever product. Um, I'm going to start seeing how people react to these type of creatives that buy this product. Even if it's like, you're all buying just shirts or belts or shoes or whatever. Um, and then this is easy to sell. Like, you know, we can easily see in North beam and, um, and share with leadership and, and the, the client, uh, you know, the performance per ASC and per product. Um, even if you have collections, 
you don't have like a, you know, a bunch of, if you have too many products and you just want to, the whole thing is that the biggest signal, like I said, is the product has a lot to do with what people, the type of person that buys it. You want to think of Facebook's algorithm as like, it's just trying to find the people that resonate with the signals that you give it. So um, even if you have a shoe that is a different color from a different one or a different style, it's different people. Um, so giving, keeping, try not to dilute any of the signal. Um, which is another tip in ASC. I do, we see it perform kind of poor if you have multiple ASCs with the same creative and a lot of redundancies. Um, so keep it one ASC, one product, uh, creative types just for that product. Um, and that usually works pretty good. And then uh, I think someone was asking about the percentage new versus returning. So we do... Um, I like 0%. I don't like giving it. I just like, like Facebook to me is an acquisition tool. You have all these other channels that you could use for getting, you know, not finding new people. You should maximize Facebook's effort to find new people. So I do 0%, but I think anything less than 20%, but I'm also agnostic. I don't believe in absolutes. So I just, that's what works for us on that. Um, looks like Landon asked how important is new versus returning when it comes to ASC and one day click performance. Um, yeah, we use, not sure exactly, but we use one day click for everything. And literally our, our North star is make it conservative as possible in platform and in North beam and um, use uh, one day click is, is pretty much what we do. So this Facebook uh, so this North Bay metrics here showed that we spent a decent amount year to date on ASC. And this is actually, you could, I don't know if you guys know, but like, I'm sure some of your North Bay power users do, you can create really good breakdowns like this, like ASC versus non ASC, um, or whatever you want for anything. They have a naming convention. We have pretty gnarly naming conventions, so we could create any breakdown that we want, um, which makes North Bay super useful for that even your landing pages, creative types, whatever you want to do. Um, so we look at that, great to look back. And it's funny because Facebook didn't do, like Facebook shows that it's doing way better if you look at the 2.6 versus 1.3 Facebook one to click ROAS. But Northbeam is showing like, hey, that's nah, doing about the same. And it's not, not a whole lot of difference. It's a little bit of a lift, um, which if there was this big of a lift here, as Facebook said, We'd have, we would have seen that in the MER and the CAC and top line, and we have scaled that aggressively. So um, just by not knee-jerking and freaking out and looking at North Beam, um, we just kind of kept it kind of almost like an even split on spend a bit. What you're, I mean, what you're doing is you're just running responsible experiments. Like you're not interfering with signals. You're keeping your variables separate. It, like it shows you clearer levers to pull. And like so often people are sitting there staring at their ad accounts and they're like, what do I do? You know, yeah. or you have a, you have a, a, a predisposition about what you should do. I need more ads. I need more iterations of that ad. And actually, if you're not, if you're not creating these clear breakdowns in North Beam, if you're not structuring your ASC campaigns in this very specific way, mm -hmm. you're not actually getting clear signals back that you can make clear judgment calls off of. Yeah. Yeah, I want to touch on real quick because you brought up a good point on like creative, just kind of like creative strategy and, and creative performance. Because I think about a year ago or so, the narrative was like, we just need like insane creative testing, like test as much creative as humanly possible. Just and like we I've done that. I, I went that route and I tried it. And next thing you know, like your creative testing budget's like 80% and the account's bloated and like, you're just, all you have is an expensive creative team. That's, that's really all you're achieving. Um, so now kind of my direction is I want to find like creative diversification is huge. And I think Facebook, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I think they're coming out the products on that. I don't know, face on creative diversification. Um, but they've told us that that's huge and they're measuring, um, creative diversification which means like if all of your creative looks the same you're not going to get a lot of new visits and branch out to new people so now i really have less creative and just focus on that creative diversification like for example if you if you're i kind of made this uh presentation once that branding could actually like is that like the opposite of branding because 
if you make all of your creative and it looks the same, which is on brand, um, which is great, you're kind of, you're just hitting the same people. And if you make a creative that like, you know, looks kind of like crap, then one looks like this, one's towards old people, one's toward young people, and one's uh, men, women, like get that diversification, one's UGC out there, um, then you'll start getting that new visit up, especially if you have a lot of um, like the same thing going on for an ad account, the same type of creative for a long time, that data just built up. So that's something that I like pushing recently is creative diversification and not just piling on a bunch of creative. Um, all right, let's dive into to reels real quick. So yeah, so this is a strategy. It, it worked really good about a month ago and it's working decently now. So hopefully it will start working, but it still works. I think like a little bit better than, than other strategies. Um, so this is something that it's not like testing reels and the placements. So it's all placements. What this is, is if you have, I, I truly believe founders make the best ads ever, um, even if they're terrible at it. Like they, like every time I tell a founder, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know how to speak in front of a camera, I can't do it. And they're all shaky and the ad will just like crush, even if it just looks bad. Um, I think it's, if you're on Facebook and you see someone talking about their story and they made this brand, you're like, that's interesting. That's way better than the feed I was getting before this. So, um, so what we do is you create a reel. So tell the founder, or it doesn't have to be founder, but have the brand create a reel that they could post organically. It's a little bit about the product. Um, it could even be like a five reasons why, but it's going to post on their Instagram. Um, they can't put product tags or stickers on that post because this won't work. Um, even if they have copy, that's like, doesn't look like Facebook ad copy at all. Even if it says like, I think we had one that crushed and it just said shop link in bio or something. Um, and then when you go into ads manager and you grab that real post ID. So when you go to, um, when you click on the select a post post ID and you go to, uh, Instagram, then you should be able to find that real. If you sometimes you can't, I haven't found a way to get the post ID from the organic post. So you have to go find it in ads manager. Um, and then you, uh, click on that same real post and you add a CTA because we'll have a CTA on it and a link. And then you start with lowest cost. Um, it will take, since it doesn't have, when you set it up this way, it will use your website metadata as a headline. So it doesn't work that good for the landing page. Um, so then you want, then this, we've split tested this. Um, I wish I put the data here, but this did way better versus say having a, a UGC created and you put it in an ads manager and you just launch it that way versus launching it, uploading it as a reel, then getting the post ID and then and then running that post ID as an ad in ads manager. Same everything. This got like 30% less the CAC. Um, and we just scaled the crap out of this. This is like got new visits. It, it did everything. Um, and it does a couple of things that boosts your Instagram because that, that actual reel on your Instagram will get more views is linked to that, which will tell Instagram that, Hey, there's getting some traction here and will help help your Instagram algorithm. Um, and it's also just an amazing ad strategy. You get, um, it looks organic. So a great strategy, which I wanted, I, I think more brands could do this is do this frequently post a reel once a week that can be an ad and then have your ad team or, or media buyers do this, tell your clients to do this and, have them post an organic reel and then uh, just launch that like one of them a week um, and it will help their Instagram and also get better sales and conversions. Um, so those are the, the three strategies, reels, ASC, and um, web plus shop. It's pretty this much is great stuff. And, and this is what I'm seeing a lot of, I, I think a lot of our top performing North Beam customers use. Um, as far as, getting in touch with you, Zach, and talking more yeah. about this. Um, what's the best way for people to, to get in touch? I've like never had a website and I've been building it for like two years, which is terrible. Um, so I just hit me up on Twitter. This is my Twitter, Zach L. Duncan. Um, pretty responsive. If you guys just send me in the DMs and we could talk and email if anyone has any questions or anything. That's great. Zach, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah. This is always, this has been enlightening. Um, chatting with you is always enlightening. I hope to have you back someday. Um, do some more of these. If anybody has any questions, shoot them at us, shoot them at Zach, follow us at Northbeam. We'd be happy to see everybody here next week. And don't worry, we're going to follow up with an email right after this with this recording. 
with that notion doc and all the details that anybody might might need um so zach once again thanks for joining us and uh thank you everybody for being on the media bar webinar this week thanks brian thanks guys